turned on it. How did he not eat it though? Did you see him turn on it? Got him. I got that one. <laughs> see, we saw that one. Oh, there's another one following him. <laughs> Little wacky Cinco bass. Look at that, Simon. <laughs> there you go, and he ate it. <laughs> see, they're eating. <laughs> it only took us how long? Seriously, how long did it take it? There's, there's another no, one under there. There's one. a bigger one under there. Get him. Oh, he's coming over to your bait. He's coming over to your bait. If you don't get him, I will. There's a couple under there. Folks, today we made the trip all the way to Yuma to fish with a good friend and a great partner of the show, si Simon Apocadaco. <laughs> Is that right? Apocadaca. Apodaca. Apodaca. <laughs> Try to say that name. I'm telling you, this guy's awesome. And he's built, he builds these Taipan rods that we've been using for the last few years now. Awesome rods. And he says, one of these days, you got to get out here to Martinez and, and what's the other one? Uh, Mitri. Mitri. Mitri Lake. And uh, get out and try to catch some of these fish. And of course, look what I'm throwing. <laughs> now, let me explain something to you folks. And you know I love you. But he, he brings me out here and he takes me down the... Takes me down the, the lake. We went into Martinez. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I so, and I want you to explain to folks here in a minute, but the difference, because you're going to have some of your friends going, you're not at Martinez, but we're going to explain that in a minute. So we went and did a lot of flipping. We did some frogging. Now we did have a cold front blow through just a couple days ago. So I don't know what's going on with that whole scene, but I can tell you this. Um, we finally came back into Fisher's Landing. Fisher's Landing. Yep. And I said, this open water. I know everybody that lives here is against a spinning outfit, but with this open water, I know I can catch them under these docks, you know, and with, with, with you have an open water like this, you can catch eight, 10 pounders on a spinning outfit and not have to worry about it. Now, if you're fishing that thick stuff like we were earlier, you don't want to be throwing this kind of tackle. I want to say we're at Martinez, but we're not. Can you explain it? Yeah, Fisher's Landing is where normally where everybody puts in at. You know, they're always at Fisher's Landing. There, There is a boat ramp at Martinez, so don't okay. get me wrong, there's a little one. But most of our local tournament and most of the bigger tournaments that come here put in at Fisher's Landing. And then what it is, is it's a river system. And then Martinez is actually a backwater lake off of the river system. And we got numerous lakes off of this river system. You see, I'm sure you've heard of people punching in the backwater uh -huh. with their aluminum boats and getting back there. And there's a lot of those types of lakes, but there's a lot of other lakes that you could take a big boat in absolutely no problem. Okay. You got Fishers, you got Face Lake, you got Ferguson, it's just a bunch of different bigger lakes that it, okay. it makes up of. One thing I love about this lake, or this body of water here, is it's a lot clearer than we were just in. That Martinez, where we were at, was really muddy. Not that I don't like muddy water, but after flipping for so long and not getting bit and throwing frogs, it's like, man, we gotta do something. You gotta let the fish tell you what they want. Right, Simon? Look at this! <laughs> Look at you! Get that fish in! You caught my fish, and he's the bigger one. Look at you. What was that on, son? That was on the swim bait. Oh, that was on your swimmy? Yeah. Hold on a minute. Oh, no, we're getting a little bit better fish there, huh? Look at that. Oh, yeah. You just did that on purpose. <laughs> You've been throwing that thing all morning. I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> Look at this. Nice yeah. fish. Yeah. So, Put him back. He's like, I want some more. fish. Oh, we're going to catch some fish. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at the size of that fish. Don't move, don't move. Don't move. You got one? Yeah. All right, great job. Great job. You finally got one on that little swimmy, <laughs> huh, little guy? Yeah. Another. Nice. I just saw a big one. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I just saw a big one. Great job, little, Simon. Little old rat, little old There you go. Gun. There you go. <laughs> little Martinez fish for you. Now, show the folks at home the, the swim bait rig that you're throwing. What what uh, what it's, rod are you actually using for this? I'm current? using a 764. This is my old standby 764 okay. uh, rod. It's, as you can see, it still has the split grip and everything, but 
Man, this is a workhorse right here. This is this guy. One is, of the first type hand rods or what? That's right, it is. <laughs> yeah. So, but you could tell it's all worn out. What and pound stuff, test line are you throwing on this? This is a, a 15 pound test. 15 pound? Yeah. All right. So, and, and in the little swimmy, what is little, that? That's a, actually a Huddleston. Hard to find Huddlestons. Yeah, swim bait, You, you so. carry the older style ones, which, <laughs> hey, if it works for you, you've been using it a long time. I know I've taken you fishing before and you love these baits. Yeah. I've watched him crush fish on this. <laughs> but this guy lives here, so he knows kind of what to throw. I've thrown some skinny dippers and things like that a little bit. Haven't been bit on it. But, uh, you know, if you can't get, the fishing's just not where it, where you thought it should be anyway. It's not. That front it's really been, hurt it, didn't it? I think so, yeah, and it's so, been pretty tough. And so, uh, are you just throwing that out and letting it fall? Or are you swimming it I in? do both. What I'll do is- We're I, in I, current. I, yeah, so. so you gotta kinda get it to move a little bit, but a lot of times they will hit it on the fall. That one just happened to hit it when it when it was swimming. That one earlier, it hit it when it was a falling, so. Well, I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna try something different. I threw that wacky that wacky rig for a little bit. Got a few bites on it, caught a fish or two on it, but I'll leave this around, but I think I might pull me out some, a little swim bait and see what I can't do with it, like what you got going on. It just so happens, because I knew I was coming to visit you, <laughs> that I may have something like that. Uh-oh. You just slow rolling that thing? Well, I'm trying to just keep the tail moving. That's all you're and, doing. And well, you gotta go a little bit faster because we're fishing the current down, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, nice fish, son. <laughs> All right, Simon. Look at that fish. Get him in here. <laughs> he gets him in the boat, swings him like he's some kind of big pro. My goodness, look at I that. Would, I would have a, what is it, a two minute penalty? Was he in the, he was right <laughs> next to the reeds, wasn't he? He was, in this yeah. current. Now, now see, we weren't fishing the current earlier and <laughs> this current seems to make the difference, doesn't it? It does, huh? it does, yep. They're, that warmer water, they're not liking that warmer water in the back. So you're the like, you're, warming up you're thinking and, they're kind of getting up in this current a little bit. He came right out of the reeds, <laughs> didn't he? He did, yep. All right. That's a good sign, because we haven't fished any current yet this morning, really. We've been fishing the backwaters, the... Yeah. We've been fishing everything that's not current. The one thing nice about these baits is they're weedless. Yeah. And so you can get them out there and get a couple of, you know, get a couple of cranks on it even through the weeds, it'll come through it, won't it? Mm-hmm. You just gotta be a little more sensitive with it. You know, work it out, don't be too aggressive. Sure. Because the sides are real soft and they will hang up. <laughs> That's a given. Hey, I just wanna hook one on that thing. Glad You'll I get. had one, glad I had one. Things are hard to find. You get him? Another one! He knew exactly where to throw. Look at this. That's a nice one, son. That's a nice one. Look at that. Good job. Look how green he is. That's, a That's the kind of fish, fish. isn't it? You're going to have everybody wanting to go find these baits now. <laughs> Seriously. Threw right up in front of my spot there to catch my fish. You believe that? You're just barely bumping that, aren't See, you? See, and 15 pound test is perfect. Is, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. It's not a. Uh, this is 14. I hope it's okay. I, well, it's not a. Uh, it's not heavy compared to what we're used to throwing around here. You know, we throw 65 and 85 pound braid a lot. Oh my God. So when we're flipping, you know, and. Is there a reason why you're not throwing braid on this particular swim bait? Yeah, the reason why I don't throw braid on this particular bait, I do on the bigger swim baits, you know, the, the weedless big swim baits with the owner beast hooks and stuff like that. You got to, because you're getting it way up underneath that stuff. Okay. But this guy, I, I don't really pitch too far up in there. No, I, I notice you're not bit. making real long casts. You're just kind of flipping it up there, ain't you? Yeah. Oh, I got, oh, I had one on. <laughs> oh. Tighten the drag, Johnson. <laughs> oh, man. I quit. That's two. This is the funny thing, is we were just talking about this. I don't think I've ever seen, I mean, I've seen a lot of things fishing, obviously, 
But this is the first time I think we've, we've ever just gone down the bank and flipped, just literally flipped a swim bait in the pocket and let it flutter down. Yep. That's kind of what you're doing, yes. is you're flipping in there. I started taking note because he's catching some fish and he's not catching them by casting and whining a long ways. He's pitching it out in the little pockets, letting it fall and letting the water just kind of drift it and take it a little bit. And it's wobbling down there like a flutter spoon and they're smacking it. <laughs> so I've got a couple bites doing that, but that's that's pretty much what I've what I've learned off you so far, son. <laughs> Is that how it's supposed to be done? Yes, sir. Other than fishing, I, I want to know something. How long you been building rods? Not your since, own business, but, but building it, rods. Building custom rods since well, I started making my own personal rods in like '93, I think it was. Wow. So. So he's been building rods a long time, folks. And uh, the reason why I bring this up is because we hear of a lot of people that build rods, but realistically, and they're still building the rod, but they, they get the blanks and then they put the guides on them. And that's where I want to get to this point here is you watch this video clip we, we did at his, at his uh, place. And it's just incredible watching a rod being built from scratch. You got to see it. So this is how your rods start if you've got a Taipan rod and uh, <laughs> Simon builds these things, they're made in the USA, a true rod builder, I will say. <laughs> and so, uh, so, so to make the steps of everything that you've done, you've wound the rod, things like that, this is what you start winding it with, obviously, or making it with, right? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Yep, each rod has a different flag pattern. We have this book here Okay. It has all different flag patterns in it. Okay. And each rod, even though it's basically made on the same mandrel in our particular factory, by changing the flag pattern and changing the way we cut the graphite, we'll change the total action of any rod. Now what we'll do is we'll start laying out the flag pattern to roll on to the mandrel. This is what we'll be making up the butt section of the rod where you get your backbone from. Now you understand why they call it rolling a blink <laughs> yeah you got to roll it and what this this cellophane does is it this machine will wrap it around it and it'll hold all the graphite and prefrag material all together and as it heats up in the oven this material will kind of shrink okay. as the graphite expands so it produces a tremendous amount of pressure while it's in the in the baking process. Okay, now what is that that you're actually wrapping on the rod? This is what they call cellophane. Cellophane. Now this one's getting ready to be hung, right? Yes, that is correct. It will hang it from this tip section that holds it together because each rod has to hang in the oven. Okay. Now folks, there are certain tricks to the trade we obviously can't show because they are tricks of the trade for Simon and his company, but uh, all in general, you're seeing how these rods are built and it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then we'll just shut it up. Ready to go. Now, what does this bake at? It bakes at 275. For how long? Three hours? For three hours. All right. Now the rod's out. Now what do you do? Now we're going to strip the plastic off, the cellophane. OK. We put it on there, and that's basically what held it all together. We pulled the mandrel out. Now we're ready to strip the cellophane okay. off. OK. And then we'll sand it. We'll run our blanks through the sander with three different grits. Okay. To get a nice, smooth finish. This has completely been sanded three times, and that's the buff finish. All right. Raw graphite. We've taken all the, the time to wrap all the guides on and stuff. Okay. And we've coated it. We've coated it with an epoxy coating. All right. And now it's been cured and ready to go. A lot of people know we use the spiral wrap technology. Yeah, explain. Right what happens is, is it starts out with the guides on top, All right. and then it rotates around to the bottom, and it kind of acts like a spinning rod. So what'll happen is, is you have absolutely no twist because the guides are on the bottom of the rod. Okay. So when you're fighting a fish or you're using it, the line is on the bottom, so you don't have no sideways torque. Our spinning rods, we have the guide backwards. Okay. And what that does is it absolutely prevents any chance of line slappage on the frame of the guide. So you got nothing is touching that line when it's going okay. into the guide 
and you maximize your casting distance and your sensitivity. So the line doesn't get caught up or anything yep. up in the guide like it normally would if you try to sling it real hard. Exactly. Or okay. Correct. And you get a little farther cast. So that's why these look like this when you see them. I know a lot of folks have emailed me going, hey, it looks like you bent your guide. That's not, that comes purposely that way for a better cast and to help you with the line to get it through the guide. Exactly. Awesome. Well, there you have it. The Taipan factory, you learned how, to, how these rods are kind of built and uh, we, we, uh, you obviously kept some secrets out, which is awesome because there's always a little bit of a secret when it comes to rod building that yeah. you want to keep because it's Taipan rods. But uh, Simon, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Let's get back thank out you. to the water and catch some fish, huh? There you go. All right. There's a fish. All right. Get him in here, son. <laughs> Simon. Right there, look at that, two pounder. <laughs> Good job, good job. Flipping it on the docks, <laughs> flipping it on the docks. Yeah. You see, you see there <laughs> is fish still around there. And I just got, what did I just get done saying? This time of day is when I like to go hit the docks because you got all that shade underneath these docks. You caught him underneath that wood dock? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I finally got you. <laughs> I'm like, my rod, my line's taking out. Simon, let me show you how to do this. <laughs> you know, I've had a great time today. I didn't really set the world on fire by no means, but I don't think this lake's really setting the world afire on nothing, do you? No. Ah, let me get that hook out. Got it. Boy, he had it down there too. Yeah, Look at that dude. little male bass like that. <laughs> Folks, I'll tell you what, I had fun on, you know, we're not done. We're not done, because we're going, what lake is it? Mitri Lake. Okay, while there's I'm a, here. There's a fry, look at it. Yeah, That's little, little fry busting. right there. But we're gonna hit Mitri Lake probably tomorrow, but we're done here today. Look at that. Did you yep. see that fish come up and grab those fry? We're, you know, they're little guys. But you know, we came back into, uh, what was it, Fisher? Fisher's, Fisher Landing. Fisher uh -huh. Landing. And uh, thought we'd catch a few dock fish. And I, and I told Simon, I said, I bet they hit that swim bait around that dock. And of course he catches it, I didn't get it, but that was awesome, I'm so <laughs> happy for you. What kind of rod is that again you're throwing on that? It's a 764. Taipan rod. Re yeah. Remember that when you come out here. So when you come out here, you can throw the right rod for those particular baits, it's a lot yeah. of fun. That was a drop shot bass I just caught. Anyways, had a blast, buddy. It Thank you so fun. much. We'll so. go get them tomorrow, oh, yeah. and, and, and uh, we'll see what happens. Sorry the fishing wasn't as good as we thought it would be, but, you know, hey, this is a beautiful place to be. We saw some great scenery, and I've never seen a place like this. It's awesome. you got to come check it out. We'll see you next time on the show. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks.